right. So a lot of you guys have been mentioning how far the aiming is when it comes to the shooting. So you guys are right. I need to fix that. Uh, I can't see it here. So let me first turn on for duration. And I'll talk about, for one thing, why this is happening and a bunch of different types of fixes to fix it. So let me first start with this. So shooting from here looks pretty accurate, right? But as we get closer, you can see it becomes more and more inaccurate the closer you get, like completely inaccurate. So why is this happening? Well, let me show you with some paint. This is gonna be so bad. I don't really know how to, I'm terrible with art. All right, so this is, actually, let me pull up the blueprint camera here, or blueprint, the third person blueprint. So you have your follow camera, which is going to be your end results, but your starting result is your weapon. So there's, your starting location is going to be right at the muzzle of your weapon. And your ending location is going to be the forward vector that we got, uh, however much distance we got away from that, which in this case is 100,000 or something. So pulling up the paint here, let's get a little eyeball. This will be our camera. And then that's our weapon. Uh, so, you have something, let's say this thing is 100,000 meters away. This little dot over here is 100,000 meters away. It's going to start at this weapon, and it's going to get this location 100,000 whatever units away, and it's going to start at this location and go to this location. So it's going to triangulate that distance 100,000 units away. The problem with that is if the object is not 100,000, it's set at one point. So if it's right in front of your face, you now have this offset between where your eye is going and where the, the weapon is shooting because it's predicted at a set distance of 100,000 distance away from where you are right now. So an easy, simple, simple, simple fix for this is literally just changing this weapon here to the follow camera. So if I attach this here, well, now we have it coming straight from your head. So it's gonna be completely pinpoint. So, I mean, that, that that is a fix if you just want it to come straight from your head instead of from the gun. But if you want it to come, come from the gun, just be more accurate, you can watch the rest of it if that's good enough for you, then you can just um, stop right there and uh, I'll see you later. Bye. All right, for everybody else who wants to stay here and uh, figure out a way to do it with the weapon so that it adjusts with the aiming here. I don't know if I explained that very well. Uh, let's, let's change this back to weapon here. So this is going to be the line trace by channel and god damn it. Yo, what's up? Hopefully that's it for the leaf blowers. Probably just jinxed myself, but uh let's try to get through this as quick as possible before they get back. Alright, so um I changed this to weapon. I don't want this to be a weapon. I uh, actually want this to have the follow camera attached to it because this is going to be 
basically the line that's going from my face to how far away something is. So on that hit result from the, the line going from my face to whatever object it is, that's going to be the distance it is from the actual object. And then the gun is now going to have the start location from there. It's going to end at where that point hits. So if an object's 400 meters away, it's now going to trace it up to 400 meters. And that's going to be how far away that the weapon is going to triangulate the position. So what does that mean? Uh, well, might as well just show what that means, right? So let's see. Uh, I just want to get a line chase by another line trace by channel. Line trace by channel. Uh, the starting location is going to be the gun itself because we want it to fire from the weapon and the distance away is going to be the out hit result for that which is going to be a location. So let's split this and it's going to be out hit by location is going to be the end point. The start point here is going to be the weapon itself. Let me just get, get weapon, get weapon, get location, location. Uh, I named it muzzle, I believed muzzle. And it's going to pull the scene from the muzzle. That's going to be the starting location. Let me double click here. Going to move this around here. Uh, we don't want the debug from this anymore because this is just going to be our looking thing. It's going to come from our eyeballs. So we want to see the line trace for the uh, for the weapon coming from the weapon. The weapon coming from... We want to see the line trace from the projectile coming from the weapon. So we have this. That's set up. Uh, that should be all for this. So now what we need to do is we need to attach these back up. So let's take a look and see how this looks. Full camera, weapon, compile, and save. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to shoot something far away. Okay, that's kind of loud, dude. Sorry for the jump scare. Uh. I'll reduce the volume on that. Post editing, post editing, during editing. All right, so I'm shooting at this and I'm getting closer and closer and it stays the same no matter what I do. So that is working. All right. So that's working, but if there's no set location, what happens? So if I shoot in the air, it should be shooting towards infinity, right? So what happens when I shoot towards infinity? It traces back to the spawn location for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that, but we should fix that. I, I, I don't know what I was expecting it to do. I wasn't expecting that though. So what we need to do is now create a branch, whether it's true or false, where it has an actual hit. So if true, I want all this stuff to occur. So let me create a branch right here. So true, I want this stuff to occur because this stuff is working. Condition is out hit blocking hit if this condition is true. So if it has an out hit, which is a blocking hit, and that's true, do this. But if it's false, I want it to, I probably copy a lot of this stuff over. Let me just copy all this. Uh, 
I right, just copied everything from the top and put it down here. I'm not going to use everything from the top. Uh, I don't need this. I would rather have this stuff. All right, so I put this here. I pretty much just copied everything from the lower half of this and pasted it here. And then I have the weapon sockets. Oh, I could have gotten get world location for the weapon uh, because I already assigned the socket as like the main thing for the weapon. Uh, doesn't matter, they should do the same thing anyway. But yeah, if you want to get world location instead, go ahead and do that. And just set it up exactly like we had up here. So we have that, 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 that. Should that be good? I think that should be good. We're about to see though. Let me hit play here. And now I'm shooting. Everything's accurate here. All right, now I'm gonna shoot into the air. And I shoot into the air. All right, one thing I did not do was change this to projectile here. Both of these trace channels to projectile. And for that, if I do that, it's going to actually stop the bullets before it hits this thing. Because on the BP turret, the default for this thing is overlap all dynamic. But for the projectile, it has the default for block because we set projectile defaults to block. So what we want to do here is we want to change this default here and custom. And then we're just going to change this projectile to overlap. So compile and then save that. We'll hit play. And... And it is no longer hitting the the blocking thing in front of it. All right. Well, that's it. Bye. See you in the next one. Adios. Whatever, whatever. Bye.